Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. So within today's video, we are going to be talking about Fabrizio Diaz, who is a central defensive midfielder from Uruguay. Then later in the video, we're also going to be talking about a potential swap deal that could be including Ferran Torres and Carrasco. And then lastly, we will be talking about the latest regarding Vitor Roque. There is plenty to discuss within today's video. I hope everybody is excited. We are again a few steps away from Barcelona winning La Liga. Barcelona look like they are going to be rejuvenating this whole squad for next season. So there is a a lot to be excited about and I hope you guys are very excited and so let's do this and let's first talk about the central defensive midfielder Fabrizio Diaz and it says here according to Roger Torreo that Barcelona have begun working on signing the 20 year old Uruguayan central defensive midfielder they're looking for a formula to close it but as of now nothing is done yet due to financial fair play now keep in mind that Barcelona will be knowing exactly what they could do in the summer by the beginning of the first week of May supposedly La Liga is going to be telling Barcelona Barcelona, this is how many players you can bring in and this is going to be your wage bill and how far you could actually go. So I do believe that the moment Barcelona do have that feedback from La Liga, Barcelona can have more clarity on who they could sign exactly. So if you guys do not know who Fabrizio Diaz is, he is again a 20 year old central defensive midfielder that does represent Uruguay and Liverpool FC. Not Liverpool from England, but Liverpool from Uruguay. And one of the reasons why Barcelona are looking to sign this player is because they like his style. They like the way he receives the ball. His body orientation is also great. The way that he delivers line breaking passes. All of these qualities are things that Barcelona want in a central defensive midfielder. And it's very important, especially when you are a Barcelona pivot. And keep in mind, Diaz knows how to play as a lone pivot. At the moment, only Busquets knows how to play as a lone pivot. So this is a very interesting incorporation for Xavi Hernandez and Joel Laporta. Now, it's funny how scouting does work, right? Because I'm going to be explaining exactly how Barcelona found out about this player and why they want to seal the deal as soon as possible. So according to Mundo Deportivo, they have stated that Barcelona have started working on the operation to sign Fabrizio Diaz, like we have explained earlier. And the reason why they want to seal the deal is because they know that he is going to be in a tournament that is going to be the under-20 FIFA World Cup, which is going to be starting on May 20th. So like around a month from today. And Barcelona know that if this player does have a great performance in this tournament, his value is only going to increase. And right now, his value is is around five to eight million euros. If he has, again, great performances in the World Cup under 20, his value could rise like three to four times even greater, maybe 40 to 50 million euros. And Barcelona do not want that. Barcelona want to sign him now before his rate does increase. And this happens all the time, right? So this is completely normal. It happened with James Rodriguez. It happened with Kylian Mbappe. It happened with Enzo Fernandez. It happened with so many players. And this is regardless if it's the World Cup senior or the under 20 World Cup. So the whole idea is for Fabrizio Diaz to sign with Barcelona before the under 20 world cup and then join barcelona after the under 20 world cup is over and then join the preseason and here's where it gets very interesting right it was also reported about a couple of hours ago coming from a source in uruguay now take this with a grain of salt who knows if this is true or not but the fact that we have a source from uruguay claiming something like this is huge news but they have stated that diaz will be a new barcelona player already the midfielder will join the spanish team after the sub 20 world cup is over the complete closing fee is 8 million euros and this is a big leap for the Uruguayan captain. And so it's crazy to hear that maybe potentially Barcelona have already signed this player. Again, take this with a grain of salt because the only source that has claimed a story like this was from Uruguay. But it'll be very impressive if this ends up actually being true. Like if we hear like within these next 8 to 10 to 12 days that yes, it was true that Barcelona signed this player a long time ago. They just want to keep it under wraps. Now, one of the reasons why Barcelona have also been so impressed about Diaz is because he performed very well at the South American Under-20 Championship that was held earlier this year. I think between the days of January 21st all the way until like February 24th, around that time. It happened very early in 2023. And he also captained his country to become the runners up in that tournament. And so the final for the under 20 championship was actually between Brazil and Uruguay. And this is where I do say, this is how Barcelona found out about this player. Barcelona originally went to that final to go see Vitor Roque to play up against Uruguay. And it so happens to be that Fabrizio Diaz was also there. And so Barcelona were probably like, hey, look, I know that we're scouting Vitor. He is a phenomenal player, but there's also been another player on Uruguay's side that is performing very well, and we need a central defensive midfielder. That player right there named Fabrizio Diaz, he could be a very interesting prospect. And so that is how Barcelona found out about this central defensive midfielder. They, they found two players that could be the future of Barcelona in one game. And so obviously, the outcome of that match in the final, Brazil ended up winning, which is why we do see Vitor with a trophy and with a medal, and in the end, why he has impressed so many people and so many clubs around the world. But on 
that night, the hidden gem was Fabrizio Diaz. And that is why we saw two or three days ago, the agent of Diaz, Martin Rodriguez, at the Barcelona headquarters because he met with the club's sporting department to potentially negotiate and close the deal. So again, I don't know if this deal is completely closed, like what the source, like what the source from Uruguay did state, but at the very least, they are in a very advanced stage. Now, one of my questions that I do have with this move is that what does it mean for the future of Nico Gonzalez? Because we have heard reports about Xavi Hernandez wanting Nico back, but if they are looking and actively looking for a future central defensive midfielder who can play as a pivot, a lone pivot, it seems like right now they want to push away Nico and bring the Uruguayan in. Another question that I do have right now is about Sergio Busquets. There has been reports stating that Sergio Busquets could be renewing with Barcelona for another year, mainly because Messi will be returning and Busquets wants to be there. As a matter of fact, Busquets had dinner with Messi and Jordi Alba last night and maybe their whole agenda and their whole idea is to all stay there for one more year and give the last dance. So if Sergio Busquets does stay at Barcelona, are we going to be seeing a scenario where it is going to be Busquets and Frankie in the first team with Diaz in the B team or another scenario where we could see Busquets and Frankie continue to be in the double pivot position with Diaz rotating between either Frankie or Busquets, most likely Busquets, or could we be seeing another scenario where we see Diaz take over the position of Sergio Busquets and have him play with Frankie De Jong. And so there is a lot of what ifs right now, but keep in mind, Diaz knows how to play as a lone pivot. It's going to give Xavi Hernandez that flexibility in changing their shape or changing the formation. For example, if Barcelona ever have to face Liverpool next season or any other team that has a very compact and narrow shape on the field, and you know that you have to attack the wings, the wide areas, like what Man City did, you're going to need two wide wingers and a lone pivot. And so you could have, if given Diaz, a midfield of Diaz, Frankie, and Pedri with a front three of Messi in the middle, Dembele on the right, and Rafinha on the left. And so look, in the end, this is what I think would be the most ideal, is for him to start the preseason with Barcelona after he does come back from the under-20 World Cup, get as much game time as possible, and hopefully we can we can see what he can do with and without Frankie De Jong next to him. And I want to see any player potentially replace Sergio Busquets next season, and I hope that this player could be it. And hopefully he does well in the World Cup, because he's going to be having England in the same group. And then if Uruguay ends up being first, they could potentially face either Italy or Brazil next, because they will be facing whoever's in second place in Group D. And that's going to be a huge, huge task. And hopefully, again, like I've said, Diaz can prosper in games like this, because it would show that Barcelona have been scouting in the correct way. And maybe they brought in a gem for a very cheap price. So now let's move on towards the next topic of today. Now let's talk about Carrasco and Ferran Torres. As they say here, according to Ben Ayad, that Barcelona wants to do a swap deal involving Ferran Torres and Carrasco. Now look, this deal makes me very nervous because it makes me nervous about like who's actually in charge of this deal. Like who in Barcelona thinks this is a good idea? Because don't get me wrong, Carrasco is a good player. We saw him play against Kunde and take care of Rafinha. And he gave both of these players a very hard time. Him as a left back created one chance. He took a total of three shots on goal, won six out of the 11 ground duels. He's a phenomenal player, but I would not swap Carrasco for Fernand Torres. Like, would you really swap a 23-year-old left winger for a 29-year-old left winger? I would never do that. But I want you guys to understand what I'm trying to say here. I do think that right now, at this moment, Carrasco has a higher level than Ferran Torres. He can give more technically than Ferran Torres on the field. More goals and more assists. But who do I believe has a higher ceiling in the future and can give a higher ceiling for a longer period of time? It is Ferran Torres. I do think that Ferran Torres is a player that will peak very late and that's very normal in football. It happened with Salah. It happened with Lewandowski. It happened with Kevin De Bruyne. They all peaked very late in their careers. No one thought that Salah was going to be the head of Liverpool's attack back in 2013. No one thought that Lewandowski was going to be scoring 50 to 55 goals per season in all competitions back in 2013. No one thought that Kevin De Bruyne was going to be the best creator for Pep Guardiola's Manchester City back in 2014 and 2015. All of these players at that time in 2013, 2014 were like around 23 to 24 to 25 years old. And at that time, they were very, I would say, just solid players, but never at that time ever considered to be world class or going to be world class. I do believe that Ferran Torres falls in that category, which is why we need to give this player time. And I would especially not risk Fernand Torres and give him up for Carrasco. So it's a huge no. And so now I do want to just lastly talk about and just quickly talk about Vitor because many again are questioning whether this player will be moving to Barcelona. And of course, I want to give you guys some updates, even though they're just minor ones. And it says here, according to sources in Brazil, that Vitor is the striker that everyone still wants at Barcelona, including Xavi Hernandez. But as of today, the club is yet to negotiate with the club of Vitor due to La Liga. Barcelona knows there are other clubs very interested in the player, but they still have Vitor and his family 
from this green light. At the same time, if Barcelona ends up having no margin to sign Vitor, other alternatives will be looked at. In this case, Aubameyang could come into the scene as he's the best position choice, with the player being crazy to come back. Xavi in particular has given the green light to bring in Vitor. He's been watching his game closely in the last couple of months and he liked what he did saw. And that is going to be the latest. Again, it's not the biggest update, but let's remain calm. Barcelona's main priority is to sign this player and as soon as possible. Just like I said in the beginning of this video, La Liga will be informing to Barcelona exactly what they could do and not do in the first week of May. And once Barcelona have that idea, they will say, okay, we can definitely afford Vitor. We can bring him in. We just have to sign Messi first, then sign Inigo Martinez, and then go for Vitor Roque. So it will happen. We just need to be very, very patient. And that is going to be wrapping up today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.